<laughs> like that? So welcome can, I, can I sit? Yeah? <laughs> cool. So, hi. We're a small group of students from the Fine Art Bachelors. And we're really happy to welcome you here today at the head. And... <laughs> <laughs> So we wanted to talk about a bit our experience of internet and also how your work made us feel about it. So for my part, I haven't really experienced the uh, really early internet. And I do have some memories of what it was and how it felt. Um, I remember surfing web page without any publicity being able to watch YouTube videos and listening to Spotify without being interrupted. And I also um, would like to see a bit the old social media like it was before, like more social and less a uh, self-promoting tool. And for me also, I can feel in your work the same envy of an internet free of all the these uh, company greed and I'm really happy to meet you here today. Thank you. Uh. So, um, I grew up having a blog on Skyrock and an MSN account, and I used to log in every day from my mother's computer just to share my life, my passion, my friends, and some Hello Kitty gifts. It was literally my personal diary. So one day my mom changed her computer without informing me and I lost all of my passwords. So I couldn't visit my pages anymore and that was for me the end of an era. Uh, until this day I forced myself to remember what it used to look like. So finding your work really made me realize the import importance of archiving in order to preserve a culture. Thank you. So hello, nice to meet you. Um, for myself, I am born in the 21st century, so I do not know some of the concepts and ideas you talk about in your work, but I still feel really connected to it very quickly. It seems like I have already seen these images and stories, like as these gifts, for example, or um, maybe the memes is also a culture I know quite well. So I, I still felt a really quick and deep connection and um, it seems like you reminded us the um, internet is a culture and a memory, a collective memory that anyone can join. So uh, thank you for your work and thank you for being here. And um, also we, um, we discovered GeoCities and um, interest you had in GeoCity pages. And by doing some research, the three of us, we uh, found uh, GeoCity pages that the archives are missing. And so here it is. Thank you. Well, merci beaucoup pour cette présentation euh, eh ben, chaleureuse et humoristique et qui nous rappelle aussi le plaisir qu'on a ben, voilà, à découvrir, enfin, regarder souvent le travail de, de Olia. Euh, et, euh, I'm gonna give this back to you. Up. And now, Olia, I'm going to uh, to uh, hand over you, <laughs> hand over to you, and maybe uh, start with this uh, with this title about experience and start the discussion. Yes, th thank you very much for the, um, this warm welcome uh, for giving stage mm. to me. Uh, we are now, thank you for making your introduction in the browser, my favorite medium, and I will also stay now um, inside um, the browser. I've prepared, um, this is my homepage, just that you know where to find everything. And it's, yeah, it's Star Backgrounds again. And uh, I've made um, um, for us, for 
for you, maybe for the future, the page there, everything is collected, what I will be talking about, and maybe what I will not have time to talk about, but there are the links to the images, to the articles, to videos, and um, uh, so on. So I don't uh, promise that I will keep this page online forever, this uh, etherpad, but uh, um, I don't have plans to delete it too. Um, so let's see. As you can uh, <coughs> could see on the poster and on the promotion, my uh, talk actually uh, was, um, uh, was going to be about the words yeah, and uh, about the um, <clears throat> the words I follow in my work, and about the uh, uh, very often ridiculous, one can say ridiculous, um, exaggerated, uh, inappropriate way these words uh, are used. Uh, and uh, also, actually, well, let me tell that it was after uh, two years of um, um, uh, of us being locked in front of computers. It is uh, my uh, first appearance <laughs> IRL. I did have a lot to do during the uh, pandemic, but uh, I didn't travel for the lectures. I forgot how to put uh, the connector <laughs> to the laptop. I didn't really miss this part. Yeah, so, um, and I really um, was um, looking uh, forward and wanted to be in the best uh, mood ever, but uh, unfortunately we are now in the uh, entered uh, uh, terrible, um, how to say, I hope, maybe, hopefully, uh, terrible period of uh, um, our uh, life, um, and uh, we don't know for how long it will last, and of course, I mean the war, I mean the in invasion uh, of um, Russia in Ukraine, and uh, um, the pain and tragedy that um, accompanies it. Um, <clears throat> I'm not a, as a politician, not an activist, to um, talk um, a lot about it, but of course it's something what is all the time on the mind and also actually distracts with the things I would want to be immersed in all the time, like GeoCities pages, or like fighting with um, in, uh, experienced design gurus about the way the words should be used. Um, the words, yeah, we are, when I start to talk with the students, like when I see the first semester students for the first time who are going to start the interface design, or is they prefer to think experience design, UX, um, I always um, <clears throat> try to uh, uh, attract their attention to the fact that we are dealing with the things that don't exist like literally don't exist. So that's why it is so uh, essential to find the words for them or to understand why the words that are used, why were they picked up? Why were these particular words, words chosen for this or that? And um, <clears throat> so this um, <clears throat> uh, thinking about words, uh, uh, designing with words, um, is uh, the big part of my life, uh, my professional life. And of course, um, <clears throat> yeah, and now I wanted to um, uh, to show to you that it's, uh, <laughs> I wanted to show to you the uh, picture that we all, we all seen, I think, on the medium yesterday, uh, the, a brave um, editor in the news who um, took this courage, who was brave enough to jump into the studio and to show the no war um, poster behind the um, moderator. Um, and um, the thing is that the word war by itself is forbidden now in Russia. You can't call war, uh, you can't say war to war. And this is the way 
to their other words. Yeah, there are special operations or peace enforcement and whatever, but not the war. And this is the way to, uh, like, to not to have the war uh, for people, to blame whomever, to, it's like, to erase this. Yeah, so that it's, uh, um, it's the, the biggest uh, uh, propaganda uh, weapon, the word itself. Um, of course, the action of the, <coughs> the, and I wanted to go to the next, um, I hopefully have it um, uh, here. Yeah, there are um, another, Mm, screenshot, I think, would be here another image that would be important here that um, appeared in the mm, the last um, opposition uh, newspaper that uh, and a magazine, an online magazine that still exists in Russia and that was not closed or didn't close itself uh, in the last uh, three weeks. Because uh, it lit almost everything was already uh, closed, forbidden, uh, already before the war in Russia. But there were uh, still uh, some radio stations and some, so and they stopped to exist uh, in the last days because they were not allowed to say war, and they decided not to. And um, this is um, the last one that said, "Okay, we will. We all understand what's going on. We will not use the word, but we will still inform." their people. So they could, you know, this level, so they could report, and here's on Twitter, so they could report about their event, about their, um, yeah. oops, um, yeah, um, about this action, but they had to remove the word itself. So the action is there, but the word is forbidden. Yeah, and uh, so the, because they are very, the words, they're very powerful. I would, um, <clears throat> and this is, uh, <clears throat> of course there can be a lot of, uh, we can go deeper into linguistic and deeper into this issue, but um, I am already for a long time, um, I think, uh, I deal with uh, three words that have, of course, have no my uh, fight for some words to be able to use some words is in no way comparable to the uh, fight that um, the brave Russian journalist had uh, to go into to put this um, post. Uh, but it's. Uh, <clears throat> My fight started when uh, um, the word that I very much needed for preserving the web culture, for preserving computer culture, for keeping the memory of uh, what we all did on the online since 1993, the word started to be banned. Yeah? And this word was users. And this is a, um, the poster from uh, um, <clears throat> Facebook headquarters, where it is said that uh, employees are not allowed to say users anymore. But for me, it was the, one of the most important words because, uh, can I, the book is down there. <laughs> yeah, the digital folklore that I was researching, it's a user, it's a user culture. Yeah, and it's very important to call users, users in my opinion. Um, so I just, <laughs> I could not proceed, I couldn't give tribute to people who are not developers, you know, because you're supposed to be, um, to be valuable, but you have to be either developer or later their influencer. Um, so, and this is how, <clears throat> from um, users, um, it is not a, this, uh, Poster was not a joke. It had words. It's uh, the word user, and after the word computer, and then the word interface. They were literally um, bent, and um, 
removed from press releases, from announcement of the products, from communication. Um, this is um, um, from the, maybe some table from the article I wrote in 2012, um, a Turing complete user, where the table was updated uh, to, to have many other paradigms. Um, but uh, the idea was to show that whatever paradigm is uh, introduced um, to the, with new products, um, it would be another idea who you are, so those who were uh, users before, uh, what their role is. Yeah, what they see for what they communicate and what is actually what word is used instead of um, um, computer. Um, some things here, you can say they are speculations and uh, somewhere um, not only speculations, but let's say they're metaphors for me or some critique uh, even. Um, they're a way to, yeah, to critique um, the uh, particular phenomena, but this, if we talk about the UX, um, it is uh, like completely, um, uh, it's not fictional at all. Yeah, these are the words that uh, um, industry had to use to describe the world to the people. Um, and it became very, um, it's, there is a lot um, to, it was happening, it started to actively, very actively happen from 2008, um, this change, yeah, this um, going, this change in the language, yeah, and the, also the role that everybody should um, um, have. Um, and then, um, mm, yeah, just because we have sound. We believe technology is at its very best when it's invisible. When you're conscious only of what you're doing, not the device you're doing it with. An iPad is the perfect expression of that idea. It's just this magical pane of glass that can become anything you want it to be. And that's why so many people in so many different places are using it for so many different things. It's a more personal experience with technology than people have ever had. Uh, I will, um, I think I also, yeah, I have it in um, text here. This, uh, in, in 2012, with the introduction of um, this particular, um, with the, at that time, new iPad, um, there was, um, uh, it became this use of these words became the standard, um, um, and uh, it was clear, of course, uh, already at this moment, that um, computers are going to get slimmer and slimmer, more and more um, invisible. Um, but my <laughs> And I am not somebody who would now say, no, we should uh, have big computers and uh, uh, always refer to them with the computers. I'm fine with uh, them getting um, uh, invisible with uh, small, slim, invisible uh, magic pen of glass as uh, said there. But it would only um, be um, fair and only um, can protect us as users if we continue to remember that there are computers. And to see them, you should see yourself as a user of the computer. Yeah, this is what you, if you remember that you are the user of the computer, uh, so somebody who did not develop the system, that's why should be especially aware of the system, then we can continue to uh, use uh, equipment that is invisible. Then we can uh, use gestures or uh, accept things uh, from the industry. Um, and not just have this uh, completely, um, uh, you know, peaceful, 
uh, landscape that we all are just people yeah, that are interacting with some technology. And, through no, and there is no interface designer who uh, channeled it. No, it is an experience. Yeah? And the experience is always bigger, is always nicer, and uh, you would always hear uh, from people who are, if they're interface designers here, they would say, no, I'm not just design interface, I make, I'm uh, designing experiences. Yeah? Um, with the use of the word experience uh, became uh, <clears throat> completely, uh, became omnipresent and went, um, yeah, it is something what we can talk about, it is ridiculous what we have now. <laughs> um, around us here is just one of the um, examples that, um, uh, look, the, this experience is navigated by scrolling. Yeah, so you don't use the word website, you say experience. Uh, or uh, here, I have a huge collection, but just um, loading your experience. Yeah, it is uh, loading, uh, it's loading an application. Yeah, whatever you can, um, but it should be an experience. Uh, one of the maybe <clears throat> the most uh, uh, for me. Uh, Examples that I, I can't really uh, believe because of two, um, no, several things. But if you read the, what I um, emphasized, so that's uh, announcement of the new code that it says that monospaced phone ships from Microsoft and provides a fresh experience for command line experience and code editors. Yeah, first of all, the <clears throat> somebody we all know that you don't use the same word in one sentence <laughs> two times. But uh, uh, it uh, happens that the IT industry is really not able or is not willing or not allowed to express itself uh, differently than through the, than if not through the world, ex world experience. So this is something I don't know, like uh, also some sort of totalitarianism. Yeah, I can imagine I, if what I remember from my uh, Soviet childhood that uh, you could, um, if you uh, you have to write composition, uh, and uh, if you praise a lot Soviet party inside this composition, then a lot of uh, mistakes will be forgiven. For example, yeah, you just have to write the right thing. And here is yeah. So this experience and experience for command line experience is also something, it's really a paradox. Yeah. <laughs> if somebody here um, uses the uh, command line. Um, so where is my uh, common things? Uh, hmm, where is my pet? Um, these are just um, some um, examples, and uh, things are, um, there are a lot of, um, yeah, like to say about the uh, users, again, about the technologies and their different texts uh, and different works I made about them, but I would say that at this moment, this especially the experience the what um, experience um, is uh, um, so pushed, and um, uh, we <clears throat> when was it in? Um, yeah, it was the end of October uh, to uh, 2021. Uh, then um, Facebook or mm, yeah, Meta. Uh, introduced uh, their metaverse, um, and I think here was the uh, here already people noticed that something is actually wrong, and there is a great uh, 
from Sam Levin, the great experience, 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 experiences and experiences, experience, experiences, experience, experiences, 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 so you have the uh, links you can, um, if you like the word, you can listen to, um, to it again. Uh, but I always uh, try <coughs> to, because actually I ask students, my students to never um, use the word experience or just to, for a moment to think what you want to say exactly when you want to say experience and the same with technology. Actually, for for teaching, it's uh, I noticed that technology is uh, more uh, com uh, um, problematic term. That uh, <clears throat> everybody all the time tries to say technology, but you should uh, also stop yourself and. Uh, uh, and think, yeah, what are you talking about now? Am I talking about the computer? Am I talking about the Facebook? Am I talking about uh, Zuckerberg? Am, am I talking about, uh, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, you, will, you can always find the, uh, the exact thing you are um, talking about. You, you you were thinking about. And then it would really make a difference. Especially, you know, when we try to criticize the products that are given to us or the way uh, we do use them. Uh, so it is uh, important to use the right words. But anyway, so I here I imagined for <laughs> some moments that uh, in this uh, pad that uh, Zuckerberg is actually my student and lazy <laughs> student and I have, uh, and uh, he wrote it as uh, some <laughs> class paper and I have to uh, correct it. So I went through all the experiences and uh, wrote there what exactly he meant or would at least fit or would make sense. And sometimes it would be really you could uh, remove it or um, sometimes you, uh, yeah, he would, um, it was an application or an interface or 3D environment or whatever. Yeah, but it's uh, um, otherwise, um, yeah, I would uh, just to make fun of it, I think is not productive anymore. So I really uh, wanted uh, to, to give an example that you should make an effort and to <coughs> uh, name things by what they really are and it's especially of course important for the students who are going to be I always try to protect the users yeah but it's also very important for the designers to understand what you do you really design what you what is it a website you are doing right now um mobile app is it um, um yeah is it um an interface uh, for uh, for keyboard, or is it an interf Is it a spatial interaction? Whatever you can't just fool yourself with all the time saying experiences, because then you will not be able to design anything. You will just you will just modify material or follow material design guidelines or whatever is given to you. Um, there, <coughs> we are, let's say that, um, or should I, should I continue or was it too long now? <laughs> Or you want if to. you if you want to make a break uh, and, and uh, we ask you some questions, that's that's <laughs> totally fine. If you if you if you want, that's uh, what do you think? Or you feel like the flow and you want to continue? That's that's totally up to you. I was I was going to ask you about your students because mm -hmm. I'm really sensitive to the use of language in. Uh, Mm -hmm. Like as a writer, also, um, do you make like exercises with them where they're, where they're supposed to replace, like you make in this uh, transcript? Do you do that with them, like as an exercise in 
in the mm. studio or no like, like rewriting press release from apple or <laughs> or meta i don't know how do you uh, make them sensitive to mm. this question like uh, in your teaching it's uh, only what um, at this moment what i um, um just mentioned that i uh, tried to find the exact words instead of uh, um, technology but the word experience they don't really <laughs> use and uh, yeah but maybe it's a good it's a good uh, could be a good ex exercise <laughs> what you <laughs> will there are enough press releases that are completely yeah <laughs> going over top and there is another by the way another word that entered on the talk uh, started to accompany experience after uh, or around the same time as Zuckerberg made his presentation and it was to unlock you unlock some experiences <laughs> yeah what you you are not having them you unlocking them all the time but what, what what is interesting with the unlock word is that it's probably a bit closer to like the metaphor we used to have about the I mean, the web or in, in the 90s, we used to have a lot of special metaphor, like forums, sites, page, wall, words, islands, mm -hmm. and, and, and the metaphor of the dungeons, like mm -hmm. multi-user dungeons or all those, mm -hmm. like you, it was in like, like role-playing games, but then it moved to uh, uh, online spaces. And the fact that unlock is still there, it means something that is it's probably also a bit problematic about what it means to be closed or to be, I mean, is, is it something, what, what, I mean, probably you can elaborate about, about the problem of the term unlock, which is very strange, unlocking an experience. I think strange. it's, uh, I think at this moment is some, as if you do have some action, as if you are active, as if you had, you had some choice or uh, really achieved something, yeah, because it's very much coming from the game and yeah, but it's not, it's, it's used to, uh, uh, then some new feature is introduced or whatever is given to it as if you are, yeah. And some. probably there's a notion of re reward. Like you unlock the next stage and then you gain something. So it's always about winning something, mm -hmm. which is totally different from like what we saw at the beginning when, when you when we saw your like the, the, the website or when we talked about GeoCities in which like it's more about sheer exploration probably. Exp uh, yeah, exploration uh, um, and um, what is the <clears throat> uh, the word? Sorry, discoverability. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> there is such a uh, uh, important word uh, in, um, in in classic interface design. Yeah, but it actually means also something else. It seems that something is easy to. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, it's easy to get. It's not that you um, spent uh, like were going through the maze or were really engaged to uh, to get it. Yeah. So all this, a lot of things, they are in fact about you being uh, um, unactive, yeah, and uh, not doing anything. But uh, the words that I used, they sort of uh, give you an impression that uh, um, it's your decisions and you are um, very um, active. And this is also how it happened. What was also noticed that in this in introdu in, uh, introduction of metaverse, there was an incredible uh, overload of the word creator. Yeah, it was. Uh, uh, Zuckerberg was uh, uh, addressing not, uh, not of course, not users. The word user was not used even once. There were a lot of people, but much, much more. Um, I have it um, in this pad there. Uh, the word creator, yeah, just the as if, if you, uh, as if. If you are announced to be, um, but people mention and, 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 and create a 49 times, yeah. Well, so what, what is also interesting in what you showed is the the fact that there's this term 
experience and mm -hmm. it's it conflates a lot of different like embodied experience online so uh, we can see it with the gesture here or the the gesture that Zuckerberg make like I don't mm -hmm. know if you noticed but he's always doing this it's experience <laughs> it's experience I don't know what he's doing he's probably like trying to show, show us something look in something what you will unlock <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so there's there's something really strange in terms of the embodiment or the disembodiment of mm -hmm. of 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 the space which is totally different from what it used to be in the, for mm -hmm. instance, in the 90s or in mm -hmm. the, like the experience that the student presented at the beginning mm -hmm. was obviously, obviously different. Yeah. And, 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 and pro probably a question about that. I mean, it seems like the, the critique of the term experience you make is uh, with regards to like this notion of the user or user interface design, does it mean that you're perfectly happy with like user experience or user interface design from the 90s or you feel it's it was slightly better than like the sort of mm. like mess that, that 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 we have if we cannot talk about user and we have to talk about people so what, what's your mm. because there could be critique of the notion of users as well somehow but it's probably worse than experience uh no, I'm not happy with the design of the the interface design of the 90s, yeah, for okay, example. Okay, yeah. <laughs> if we yes. talk about the design of the um, applications, uh, I am. Um, but this were these were the forms, uh, the oh, how to say, not the forms, the environments where users could find their own ways to go around these designs, to um, to turn them into something else, to be angry about them <laughs> after all. And all this also, also because uh, uh, there was an, um, there were, the term user is in fact very active. It is a term that was uh, ridiculed, it was, um, uh, it's uh, seen as uh, a lot of compar comparisons meant to made to drug addicts yeah? and uh, all these connotations that has nothing to do with the origin of the term computer user that was a person who was starting the process and also programming the computer and also in general in the uh, in the language in English language in the uh, culture till the 70s the word uh, user meant somebody who knows how things work and then it was, uh, um, it's outside of computer history. It was replaced with consumer. Yeah? And this is also something what was happening online. And then when I was writing Turing Complete User, exactly at the same time, uh, Jack Dorsey, the founder of Twitter, he said, if I ever say a word, uh, uh, user again, charge me $140. Yeah, this was his statement, and he meant that they are these are customers. Yeah, these are our. This is what he made, and this is completely different way of uh, relations, and it's very cheap populism. By the way, it's very interesting that it's so already ten years, but he, at least, he is very consequent. I was following. I'm always following what he says. Where. <laughs> In, uh, in hope to get $140, and he really didn't, didn't never, ever. Never, never. <laughs> mm -mm. Sometimes there would be headlines that, in the headline of some article would be written about him, that he said something about users, but when, if you see transcript, he didn't really. It is a journalist who said, so he is at least. Olya, could you maybe tell us about this uh, collective manifesto you started to write in like 2013? Like, we computer users demand mm -hmm. the right to, because being uh, mm -hmm. cautious with language is one thing, but reclaiming rights as a computer using as a computer user is something else. Mm -hmm. And um, there are a lot of proposals in this. Um, Mm -hmm. Man, I, I call it a manifesto. I don't know if you would agree, but to me, it's really a manifesto, like rec reclaiming a lot of rights. I don't know if you have it online, but mm -hmm. um, it makes quite clear what you mean mm -hmm. when you say you, you want to have a visible computer, you want to be mm -hmm. a conscious user of the computer. Uh, 
I don't have this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it was. Um, it followed the one year later. Um, the idea, and it's still. It's. Um, I don't think it's. It's very alive right now. At least there are not many new contributions. So mostly things were um, appearing there uh, in 2013, 2014, uh, 2014, but some things um, um, later. Uh, there was, because there was a question, okay, there is, you are the user, so you are conscious about the system you are using, uh, you are aware. Uh, but also you can uh, demand, and you can see some things as the rights. The rights, like really, like constitutional rights, if we talk about uh, um, us as citizens, but for the online uh, world, not, not, sorry, not only online world, but for the digital world. So when you are uh, in front of the computer, be it a, a mobile phone or mainframe, if it is a mainframe, or VR environment. Um, I wanted to really, with this, when I started it and uh, um, made my own divans, I wanted to attract attention to the very specific and maybe mundane or routine things that we sometimes see as uh, just um, decisions that some interface designer made. You know, some developer made. Uh, but some things are really crucial. Um, and uh, one of them, of course, maybe the, also the most easy one to talk about is the undo, yeah, the comment. And I was saying, yeah, we have it. It was a gift we got uh, in, uh, in the 70s that it was uh, implemented in the architecture. Uh, of um, uh, of the the way you could communicate with the computer that you can go step back and you can go several several step backs so in 76 it was it could have happened that it maybe we would have never had it and we don't know yeah how would be yeah what would be this digital world from the very beginning but Actually, I never even <laughs> tried to really to imagine it. Um, and this is, but this is a crucial uh, thing. Um, and we maybe noticed it as again with um, as soon as smartphones appeared, and smartphones are computers too. That and as soon as iPads appear, which are flat, <laughs> portable computers, that you can't undo anymore, that uh, control Z does not uh, exist um, anymore. Yeah? And uh, the thing was uh, uh, with this that, uh, um, or let's say why I demanded this uh, um, right first and for foremost, because uh, um, it is without this you are really not, yeah, if you can't undo it, will lead to the fact that you don't do anything <laughs> in the systems when you can't undo. And also this is the way for the future that uh, you can um, uh, distinguish in between generated environments and IRL, because uh, this is our law for the digital environment that you can, that you can undo. There, yeah, and a lot of things uh, like this. I'm very happy that people were contributing. That um, sometimes, you know, they sound here like uh, some caprice, um, some whatever wishes of spoiled users. But when you think about them, you understand that these are actually political questions, like the right to copy and paste, the right to make screenshot, and it is at that moment they. Um, almost eight years ago, or ten years ago, five years ago, even such things sounded like, uh, I don't know, maybe a bit as a irony, but then you understand that, yeah, actually, 
if you can't make a screenshot, it means something. It means that somebody is controlling your computer. Yeah, it is not just the, um, or things are made on the level that you <laughs> don't um, don't expect. Yeah, and this and and at this moment we have a lot of it's almost getting normal that you are very often in the environments where where you can't copy and paste <laughs> and or can't make screenshots and there are reasons for it but just to think on the level of such decisions that just on the level sometimes you think that it's only on the level of interface design but these are big issues that really form. Um, everything what uh, the the way we do things online have you seen any examples of uh, interface improvements in the recent years or it's going worse and worse <laughs> have seen what sorry have you seen have you seen any improvements in the way like interfaces are designed or like because most of those proposals are like almost 10 years old so Do some of your demands have uh, met uh, a kind of response? Or? No. No. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> It's encouraging. No. <laughs> no, even the opposite. Some things that sounded like uh, <clears throat> jokes became uh, very serious. Like at that time, you know, uh, the right to, uh, to make a link, to make a hyperlink. It sounds like, okay, just somebody th didn't know what to say, what to demand. Of course, it's how can write, uh, how can uh, you not be able to make a link if you are online? Yeah. And then you are now all on the Instagram and you can't make <laughs> links. Yeah, so that, that, that's probably related to the discussion you had about the experience, which is supposed to be like super free and you have freedom and you unlock it, like the Zuckerberg quote you mentioned. But in the end, the, 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 the other side of the coin is that it's really constrained and you, there are certain things you can do and some others, like the one you just mentioned, you, you can't. And of course, it's not like every digital experience is about that, but there's certainly like a tendency to, to, to go into this. And uh, it's probably also related with something we haven't discussed yet in your work. It's the documentation of, the, mm -hmm. of, of, of a certain vernacular character of the, of the web. So of course it was easier in the 90s or even at the beginning of the, this century. But now do you, do, I mean, uh, as a researcher, do you still document this and how do you do it? Because it's, it's way different from, the possibility to archive, store, and retrieve that we had in the past. So there are consequences about this sort of like, mm -hmm. like generous network that we could collect in terms of culture. And now it's like behind closed doors and it's kind of difficult. But do you still try to document that and, and keep it for... The ch sake? Change, change in the interfaces? Or change of the interfaces or the visual character or the, the visual mm -hmm. culture that you like mm -hmm. documented in the past do you do you still do that or is, is or is it like it's not really interesting from your perspective uh it reminded to me that um the <clears throat> a semester ago a student she wanted to make a, a comparison in between netflix and amazon prime the interface and the uh, decisions that designers uh, have made and uh, very soon she realized that it is uh, uh, very difficult to, because there is a constant change <laughs> in the versions in the interface and uh, um, you would need um, huge um, support in um, also uh, the technically to, uh, to archive it, yeah, just for the, only for the research purpose purposes yeah there but it's a big field in the software preservation communities what to it's completely different uh, level of the effort have to be made now if you want to preserve things uh, for the future yeah i have a big archive of geocities pages 400,000 old web pages um, and there is 
a lot to do and my travel from 95 till now till 1995 is very <clears throat> uh, Rich, it's I. I learned a lot what I didn't remember. A lot, a lot of new things. But it is, um, it is very gradual change <laughs> in everything. It's quite a slow um, change, and there is some stability <laughs> in in uh, everything. So I am, uh, yeah, I am glad that I am. Now I am in two thousand five. <laughs> Uh, for me, and uh, this is where I try to escape. Uh, for everybody who does not know it, there my archive of the old web pages. It uh, also appears on uh, Tumblr since 2013. The screenshot of the web pages. Um, every 20 minutes, they come to the. <sighs> To, oh, to this address, one terabyte of kilobyte age. And uh, I wanted to still to make a, a post <clears throat> about it, but was distracted by everything now, because now it is the 6th of, uh, 6th of January 2005. Because the new year started for me on the GeoCities. I use also this Tumblr as a... Um, as my interface. So I go through these pages as uh, using Tumblr as an access um, interface to them. Yeah, and you know, it's uh, <laughs> for me, it's now just 2005, and uh, it's 10 years going through the archive, and that's all from, from 95. So from 95 to 2005, I came and I started in 2013, so it's almost. Why are we here now? Ah, because we talk about yeah, uh, but documenting and, st and still documenting <laughs> the web of today and archiving yeah. the web of today, which is totally different from from this, for instance. Mm -hmm. I mean, another way to, to, to wonder about this is the book Digital Folklore that you wrote with your colleague like a few years ago. Would you write a book about digital folklore these days? And what would be mm -hmm. like the difference from what you had described in that, mm -hmm. that opus? Mm -hmm. um, for me, there, I wouldn't, I'm very often asked about the, yeah, what is the user culture of today? What to see as a user culture? What to see as a digital folklore? Um, I would say this book was written in 2009 um, and um, it was dealing with the period of uh, from 90, approximately from 95, then people started to make their um, first web pages uh, to also the first decade of the last century. Then we have the uh, with uh, social networks, with especially with YouTube at that moment, 2006, um, there was a um, 2005, 2006. There was completely different situation. There, the new wave um, of um, people coming on um, online. There was an idea that uh, so the, let's put it: <laughs> their user cultures became pop culture and mass culture, and uh, there was of course. A lot, and there are people who are researching memes and the use of the new, uh, new animated uh, GIFs of uh, the uh, later years. For me, it's always very important when I talk about digital folklore is um, uh, how I would distinguish, even when I look for something today, is that uh, people are taking care about controlling the appearance of the environment where they are generating their content. Yeah, I made it so a bit bureaucratic now. Mm, but I see the digital folklore today happening in the environments that people, so say that they uh, think they see themselves as designers also. Yeah? You can say that this design is uh, um, 
amateurish, you can, maybe you don't like him, you would say it's uh, kitsch or whatever and professional, but when there, as soon as there is uh, um, an effort, an intention, and as soon as the ability seen that you can uh, design it, I, these environments are interesting <laughs> for me. This is something if you out now ask, but what is she meaning? I would go to... Where, sh where should we go to see this? <laughs> um, familiar to anybody here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Yeah. The thing is that uh, actually as dead as... Uh, Geo cities, but it's still online. As soon as Flash died, nobody can make um, things like like this anymore. It's uh, also a bit uh, tragedy now for this community that was for 15 years was getting huger and uh, huger, and that's uh, there are a lot of things uh, inside here that would. Uh, Remind me of the uh, very much remind to me the early web culture, the way the early web pages were made. Though these are just images, especially that you can see here what are this uh, you know this bling is made from. Um, so this is something what uh, I would refer to this as a digital folklore. It's all sort of a low culture. It is, a, um, it is not mainstream. Something like lyric videos on YouTube or video with lyrics. Yeah, when uh, people see them, <laughs> it's just a video, but they see that they can take something from somebody and that they will work with typography and they will um, work with the layout and exercise this uh, power to <laughs> to change <laughs> something. So, so it means that there are still some pockets of weird stuff and weirdness yeah. or non-standard quality mm -hmm. aesthetics that still exist despite mm -hmm. advertisement, robo copyright and, and everything. Because the cultural mashups on YouTube, the it's a bit tricky because they could mm -hmm. be removed automatically, but still, like you, users try to circumvent that kind of uh, problems and find their ways. Uh, obviously, yeah. But this uh, ability um, of finding the way or the chance that the platform gave to you, also to uh, exercise this ability, these are usually very important for me and so somehow this is um, where I find the um, uh, inspiration and uh, that's why actually I wanted to maybe as a conclusions to talk about the experience Webex to connect it to um, the our experience um, talk there is, uh, I said a lot about the use of the word experience in the design circles, but then there would be experience as would be seen by people who do write about film or about theater. Yeah, so about uh, um, media and uh, environments where they're already for the century, you talk about their uh, experience, yeah? special. And it um, would be a bit different. Um, and uh, it was very interesting for me to um, read this by um, uh, Francesco Cassetti, his statement in the, the book The Lumiere Galaxy that talks about the film and new media, that a medium survives as long as the form of experience that characterizes it <laughs> sorry, survives. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, but what is this, and this sort of, it's not what is 
programmed, what is given to you, but it is the way of seeing it. Yeah, it, it is what is uh, uh, viewers in cinema, or I would say users online. Yeah, what uh, uh, this f the form, what they what stays with them even after it's over, or what is the way they. Um, yeah, what is in in this case? I wanted to see if we can talk, in fact, about the web experience, if it's even possible at all. Um, this is my it was maybe the recent text uh, I wrote. It's uh, in uh, it's Infinite Science Four already. Um, it's the fourth in the series of texts about that connects the web and the film um, for me. Uh, and uh, what did I want to say? I wanted to talk about impatience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, As about um, impatience. Uh, now I, I wanted to make some important remark, but now I... Ah, I wanted to say that probably here <laughs> I now realized recently that uh, you in French you say seance for the screening, yeah. right? And then Russian too, Russians use the French word. But uh, I recently got to know that uh, in English... In English it's different. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and that in English it is the medium uh, session, yeah, then you're talking to the... Spirits. Spirits, yeah. And so <laughs> for 10 years people thought that I'm writing about the spirits. <laughs> <and> <laughs> Because, yeah, but it's actually somehow it uh, fits. Yeah, and uh, this are here that I collected the works um, that are, and sort of I state that if we can talk about this form of, of experience that web has, uh, then it would be the impatience. Um, and the many different forms of that shows here the works that in my um, op in my opinion do really um, deal with it yeah with the, um, with the way we like don't have time <laughs> or want everything immediately um, and um, how we also as as web users, how we embrace it and how we try to also to to fight it back as artists. There's some. Um, I, I should click here now. Sorry, because I didn't click here for quite some time. Unlocking the experience. <laughs> <laughs> the Shrek experience. Yeah, it's almost. It's. Uh, uh, a Twitter account that has all the, um, how many? It's five Shrek frames every 30 minutes. Yeah, And it started already, uh, it's from February 2001. And as far as I remember, it will be f over in the, um, in July. Mm -hmm. I see here there are some changes. And there are many followers. <laughs> like <laughs> 50,000. It's, it's good content. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And this... Uh, it's... Uh, the works, we almost, almost talked about the design, but uh, didn't talk about um, um, art, and then it comes mm. to art time. <clears throat> Maybe we could <laughs> let the audience ask yeah. questions. Question I'm sure the they audience, are quite yeah. curious, yeah, yeah, yeah. and also we are, we can, are reaching the I end. Ah, okay. Yeah. Merci. Are there any questions? Yeah. Uh, I no, I made it. It works now. 
Hi, this nice to meet you. It was great presentation and was great, great experience to meet you. Um, <laughs> I'm a student in the visual art in Bachelor, and I'm really interesting about uh, net art and post-internet art, etc. And uh, you're the uh, one of a uh, big artist in in uh, net art and. I think you've been already heard about the world, the post-internet art, and I wonder how you think about the difference of that two worlds between net art and uh, post-internet art, and uh, how how what do you think about that? Is that the people say it's like kind of mood, kind of. Um, fashions, uh, but some people saying it's the new art. Mm. So I will question about it. So you want me to talk about net difference in between net art and post-internet? Yes. yes. <laughs> My opinion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I am a <clears throat> I'm a net artist. <laughs> I would never call um, myself post-internet <laughs> artist. Actually, I don't know anybody who calls themselves post-internet artist. It's something what is imposed <laughs> on people, I think. Yes, it's actually a word, very uh, recent word, who came from the conversation between artists who was like Maria Olyson mm -hmm. with some other mm -hmm. uh, artists. So it's mm -hmm. not the word, uh, official word, mm -hmm. but the uh, kind of subject that we talk about with net art. Mm -hmm. um, there can be many different ideas uh, about uh, mm -hmm post-internet and uh, different uh, visions about it. I can tell you that uh, for net artists, it's very important to um, work. Uh, for them, the internet the, is or environment they're working in, it, it, is, uh, it is a material. It is maybe inspiration or also it is the other point for critique. Yeah, You are... Uh, it is like, um, it, it's the main thing, internet itself. I would also, you know, I would never call myself an artist without net mm -hmm. artist, yeah, because it's, uh, um, it wouldn't uh, make sense uh, uh, for me at all. The post-internet uh, 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 claims uh, and that, uh, yeah, that uh, networks, internet, uh, um, are everywhere, it's uh, the world around, there is no need to make a, a difference, uh, let's just have uh, fun with it. Um, and uh, yeah, there is, um, um, but then there could be another aspect of it, it's the way how it would be exhibited in the real spaces, but I don't think it's the, the main thing. You can uh, explain we, um, you can um, expose net art in real spaces. This re real and uh, and online is not um, an issue. Net art as well as post-internet, they can exist online and they can exist uh, in uh, museums and in um, in the gallery. So this is something. This I think about this we can be there shouldn't be fights in, <laughs> in 2022, but it's about the attitude. Uh, and I'm very happy actually that uh, there are still um, people who call themselves uh, net artists and they really mean that they want to expose something. Uh, it can be uh, only something what is hidden to show to people. So um, in their networks or in interfaces in the in digital products so this is this tradition i think it still exists it started with the if i can just 
talk about uh, myself and people with whom I worked, we, uh, when 25 years ago or even uh, uh, more now, we tried to show something what is invisible. But at that time, invisible, it was um, something what was just new and not many know about it yet. That's why it was invisible. <laughs> just some ideas about how web is built, yeah? And you would show it to uh, people, you would be excited and you want to share this excitement. Yeah? I think I would say now that if you, it's different because things are invisible because they're hidden very often, yeah, on, on purpose. And uh, so the art would be more critical or sometimes even, I don't know, depressing. <laughs> Not visually pleasing, <laughs> maybe sometimes. Yeah, but it's about their attitude. But also, it's my just my opinion about it. Thank you very much, uh, right here. Uh, thank you very much for coming to Geneva. <laughs> and I think it's um, it's good that you're in Geneva because HTTP, so the protocols that are behind the medium that you uh, like the most, so browsers, browser-based mm -hmm. art, mm -hmm. uh, was invented right next here, right? Uh, mm -hmm. More in the French side than in the Swiss side, from what mm -hmm. I heard, but I'm not yep. sure about that. Mm -hmm. um, so this protocol um, challenge, um, let's say, so HTTP, which has every browser has it, right? Um, there's new protocols that are in the making in some years that are, let's say, peer-to-peer -peer or that challenge the idea of, uh, cli of client and server, which is already like a asymmetrical relationship and also that affects the planet somehow because there's a server and there's a, mm -hmm. a client always asking for information, but then also affects the infrastructure, right, that uh, creates the internet. Um, my question is about uh, protocols and peer-to-peer -peer protocols. What do you think about them? And um, I'm asking this because I know you have uh, used them in one piece, um, the self-portrait, where you have three different browsers and then mm -hmm. to see the portrait, you need to access it through three different uh, access points, which different, um, mm -hmm. let's say, experiences of how to uh, unlock the portrait. Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh... And yeah, and I, I have a second question as well. Mm -hmm. Or maybe just uh, something I would like to know. Uh, from GeoCities, I remember that you started saying that the menus were in the bottom and slowly they were getting more uh, farther up in the page. Is this still the case? You said this, I think, in 2015, I think. But I don't know if this is still the case for... Uh, what? Uh, the, I didn't understand. What so did the, I... the menus were mm -hmm. in the bottom at the beginning of web development and then slowly through GeoCities, when you explore the archive, they were uh, um, getting upper in the page. On the web pages? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. This I don't, <laughs> don't remember saying that, but what I was recently researching that uh, um, about the GeoCities pages, so that um, menus are, uh, no, yes, I remember, but somehow this uh, lost it's important but what is interesting that the about me the button about me started to become more and more prominent uh, in time yeah so and uh, there is a it's maybe it's not you know it's not about the so much about the structure about the visual about the static of the pages but just uh, I can say now yeah philosophy <laughs> uh, has changed um, from uh, 1995 till 2005. It's not so much about the change in how they looked, but it's also big, but not on GeoCities. It could stay still the same. You can't really say if the page was made in 95 or 2005 because of star backgrounds were <laughs> still kept, but this uh, idea that uh, mm, many were pushed into that, actually I don't have anything but me. I have to, not only to just in between the lines or somewhere in the bottom of the page introduce myself, but the page itself, it will be about me. So I am the main content. 
and uh, this is something what I didn't think about it in uh, when I started, but it is something what I discovered what was re um, uh, like unfolding in front of my eyes these years, how pages about whatever, about Britney Spears, about Bad Street Boys, uh, SETI, or yeah, millions of reasons to make a page, they sort of uh, all uh, shrinked to about me. And uh, that's why this button was becoming bigger and bigger, <clears throat> or more and more prominent, or let's say the page was completely redesigned and abundant and became just so many I would have now, and if you scroll through one terabyte of kilobyte age, it would be, I, I decided that now this page will be about me, just me. Oh. Um, it's not my ar archive of stamps anymore, it's my CV now. Yeah. So, but, and then in the end we are, or you are now on Instagram. <laughs> and then it's, yeah, you just streaming you, um, you, yourself all the time. It's only me, 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 and me. Yeah, and you ask about protocols. Yeah, this is my. <laughs> um, there is a. It would be very difficult now to uh, to assemble it because the work is not just for one browser, but for many different ones. Um, <sighs> what do I think about um, protocols? <sighs> that they are. Um, that some, um, uh, yeah, but <laughs> I wanted to show that there are different protocols and that there are different browsers. And that I wanted that people who would want to see this work, that they would make an effort to install another browser. Just this little thing, yeah? For this work, this was um, um, important for me, just for, because maybe nobody knows it here. What is it? I think there are many videos online from people who managed yeah, to assemble it. So if you put, but it's very well made. So you have to mm, install three different browsers and you have to also to arrange them on your desktop. And uh, this is some little action that uh, I ask people to do, yeah, to unlock, <laughs> so to say, um, this project and not just to s endless scrolling all the time or um, clicking through. Um, everything. So in this work, not the protocol itself was important for me, but the effort I ask people to make, actually just to acknowledge that there are different protocols. <laughs> that there are different protocols, that there are um, different browsers. Um, yeah. It's already eight, so maybe we take one last question because I think impatience is starting to rise in the. <laughs> uh. So thank you so much for uh, this quick introduction of your work. I wanted to ask you about a specific work that you made, which is um, uh, your testament. Oh my god! <laughs> Where did you so, find it? So in this project, you you work a lot with temporality through protocols, basically use protocols as a way to engage with like a different sense of proto of uh, temporality. And I just wanted you to... Do you mean... I'm here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and I wanted you to maybe tell is, us a is bit Is it the work you mean? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I wanted to ask you if this notion of like temporality is something you're like interested in engaging with and how do you explore temporality as a creative medium or as like a creative input through your, through your projects? Temporality. 
or what? Temporality, like exploring how protocols engage with like a different uh, sense of time mm -hmm. or debunking protocols through time. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I somehow, this work is, um, actually nobody remembers it. I don't, <laughs> where, where did you find it? Some uh, long time ago in, um, 98, I think it was my, I was nominated with it for Webby Awards. <laughs> but now it's, I think, Webby, it doesn't, all doesn't exist anymore. At that time, you know, it was a challenge to, um, because all these questions about uh, um, if things are real online or not, uh, if you can sell art online or not, or what is legal, <laughs> illegal, uh, they were uh, like everywhere um, around me. And I was on the side, I always already, uh, and now it's all coming again and again with uh, N NFTs, where I don't want to be involved any in, at all because I absolutely not interested in this uh, original originality of something and uniqueness uh, of the files and uh, yeah <laughs> but so all this uh, already very vital at uh, that uh, time and I needed to write uh, I wanted to collect everything what I made till that moment and uh, to make it sort of be official, but how to make something, how to give weight to uh, something online. So at that moment, uh, it was to make it the document heavy, like literally heavy. So every letter was a picture. Yeah, every letter here is a picture. And at this moment, um, this work stopped to it became, yeah, and this is how I gave weight to the document, yeah, at that time. <laughs> so it's not very much about the protocol. It was very difficult to update it, by the way. Um, so, yeah, it is, um, at this, what we see now at this moment is actually um it's a rest it's a restoration of the project because the, because the connection is now slowed down on purpose the request is slowed down otherwise um today it wouldn't um, it would be too fast you wouldn't even notice that it's these are not pictures and at the time then it was made it was really a, a performance um, because it would appear on your screen, there would be wave, how it was done, it w there would be the wave of letter A, B, <laughs> uppercase B, so there would be um, this, the appearance on of the web page in front of you was a real-time <laughs> algorithmic art, <laughs> so to say, and then the, with fast connection, of course, it was disappearing and then with a little bit slowed down you can at least recognize it yeah. i think we have to wait i think we have to stop yeah i would i would love to stay here for like three more hours to be honest and listening to you but euh, si quelqu'un a des questions, peut-être je, je, je vous invite à venir juste là maintenant, euh, on, comme ça peut-être on peut clore la séance. Mais je, je voudrais eh ben, vous remercier très chaleureusement, Olia. Thank you very much for this uh, like, like passionnante uh, <laughs> conférence passionnante vraiment. And uh, yeah, I, I am speechless. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much and thank you Nicolas also to, for your questions and for Thank you. Thanks, this discussion. <laughs> et merci au public pour cette, uh, toutes vos questions et votre présence ce soir. Et voilà, merci.
Bye-bye, everyone.